We start today in Puerto Rico with the latest on the COVID-19 pandemic. As of Wednesday morning in Puerto Rico, the Department of Health is reporting 140 active COVID-19 cases on the island within different educational institutions, with the metropolitan region being the most affected. Now, according to data from the school surveillance system, 120 of the active cases are in grades K through 12, while the other 20 are in preschools. The total is divided into 71 cases in public schools and 49 in private schools. In the meantime, Pfizer BioNTech is seeking FDA authorization for COVID-19 boosters in children ages 5 to 11. The company submitted for an emergency use authorization after a study showed a strong immune response to a booster shot among healthy children in that age group. Now, if approved, children who are 5 to 11 years old would be eligible to receive a booster shot six months after their last dose. Children in that age group get a 10 microgram dose which is one-third of the dose given to adults. Pfizer's vaccine is currently the only COVID-19 shot authorized for children, and there is currently no vaccine approved for children under the age of five. And in the Bahamas, a new resort is coming to Nassau, and it comes as leaders are ensuring the Bahamas thrives in the digital currency industry, like Bitcoin. Our One Caribbean News, Deandra Hamilton reports. Seems it's not enough for the Bahamas to have this month started talks on a $9 billion new resort development for Coral Harbor, Nassau. Yesterday was a very big day. Now, according to Attorney General Ryan Pinder, the country is after a new niche to bolster economic performance and diversity. Yesterday, as you know, the Prime Minister introduced the government's white paper on digital assets. As he noted, digital assets have grown in a few short years into an industry with a $3 trillion market capitalization. The Bahamas, a world leader as a digital assets hub. That's the goal. And work to get this broader vision involving blockchain and cryptocurrency as part of the financial services sector is already off the ground. Matters enormously to setting up ourselves for success and to protect the jurisdiction. I want to be clear. Our policies are designed to encourage growth while keeping bad actors out. We didn't want the Bahamas on the outside of this revolution looking in. We know we can, make, we can make major contributions to this industry, and we believe we can become a digital asset hub and a leader in the international financial technology solutions as an industry. Attorney General Pinder said government started the process from week one of their election to government, which was six months ago, adding that Bahamians will be able to invest, build businesses, and work in this new industry. Fundamental to this work that is already underway with the University of Bahamas is to develop a degree and certificate programs in digital assets. One must understand this fast-moving industry to be able to professionally thrive in it, and we are committed to ensuring those opportunities exist for Bahamians. DeAndre Hamilton reporting. All right, thanks, DeAndre. Meantime, government legislators and legislatures, I should say, in St. Kitts and Nevis have filed a motion of no confidence in Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris. Deputy Prime Minister Sean Richards made that disclosure on Tuesday, declaring that the other two parties in the coalition government, the People's Action Movement, or PAM, which he leads and the Concerned Citizens Movement, or CCM, were forced to take action in the best interest of the Twin Island Federation. Now, the other member of the coalition government is Dr. Harris People's Labor Party, PLP, which has two seats in the nine-member National Assembly. The other seven are held by the PAM and CCM. Richards said in a televised broadcast that the two parties had tried on numerous occasions to mend the rift in the team unity government, but were rebuffed, ignored, slandered, insulted, and even faced character assassination each time. Because of the distrust we have experienced over the years, we, Permian CCM, were forced to act in the best interests of St. Kitts and Nevis. Good men cannot continue to stand by and see our nation hurting and not take action. Therefore, on Monday, 25th April, 2022, the majority of members of the Team Unity Government formally lodged 
with the clerk of parliament a motion of no confidence in the leadership of the Prime Minister, Dr. Timothy Harris. We expect that in keeping with the rules of Parliament, that the motion will be placed on the order paper for an urgent sitting, and that a sitting of Parliament to hear the motion will be scheduled at the earliest possibility. Now, Richard said the motion should go before Parliament within 21 days. The filing of the no-confidence motion came days after the 7 p.m. and CCM legislatures wrote to Governor General Sir Samuel Weymouth Tapley Seaton, indicating that the Prime Minister Harris no longer commanded the support of the majority of elected members in the National Assembly. The Governor General had responded that he was awaiting formal advice on the matter. In the meantime, Trinidad and Tobago's National Security Minister Fitzgerald Hines is denying claims by the opposition and its leader that the government and TNT police service are spying on citizens. Speaking at a media conference, Minister Hines called the opposition's claims reckless and dangerous. He said the interception tool known as Pegasus Spyware Solution was offered to Trinidad and Tobago in 2019, but the government declined the opportunity to acquire it because it violated the laws of the country. The opposition leader has accused the government of using Israeli-developed spy software to monitor a number of people, including politicians, journalists, and members of the judiciary. The minister said the opposition leader's claims are undermining the country's regional and global reputation. Also addressing the issue, Acting Police Commissioner McDonald Jacob denied any wrongdoing by the police service insisting that the TTPS does not currently have access to spy software and has not engaged in any illegal spying on citizens. I know as a fact that at some time the former commissioner of police had in fact purchased software that does not reach to the level of the Pegasus. That Software was in two parts. One, for a period of time, a certain aspects of it was in fact in the possession of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, and the other half was in possession of the SSA. Without both merging and coming together, nothing could not happen. On the 10th of September last year, the other what we call the back pack that is linked with the civil was in fact handed over to the SSA. So what was in the possession of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service was handed over to the SSA. Therefore, the police service right now, we don't have possession of even though that artificial spy software has been spoken about in our possession.